Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to set this up where you can have a directional PCG network and spawn grass on top of your mesh and then also change the amount of fall off on it through the blueprint as well as change how much you're being pruned so you can have more or less total and not only that, you can dynamically change it to another mesh entirely on the fly so you can control all of this stuff and more. Let's get into today's tutorial. So here we are in a brand new project. And the first thing you're gonna need to do is enable PCG if you haven't already. So under edit plugins, you're gonna wanna search for procedural and you're gonna wanna turn on procedural content generation network, which is our PCG framework network. And we're also gonna need to turn on procedural content generation framework geometry script interrupt. Now this adds extra nodes to the PCG graph that we're actually gonna use for this that are not uh, available without it. So go ahead and enable these and restart your engine and then let's get started. So let's go ahead and right click and just search PCG and get ourselves a PCG graph. And I'm just gonna call it PCG grass. I'm gonna put some grass and some rocks and we're gonna go right click and make a new blueprint class actor. And I'm calling it BP grass covered rock because we're gonna be making rocks covered in grass. Let's open up our blueprint. So here I'm gonna go ahead and add a scene component and then I'm gonna just override the default scene root. This is just to get rid of the icon and I'm gonna give ourselves a static mesh. Then open up the construction script and in here I'm gonna drag in the static mesh and I'm gonna say set static mesh. Plug it in. And I'm on their new mesh, I'm just right click and promote a variable and I'm just gonna call it mesh. And I'm gonna make the mesh instance editable because I know I'm gonna need it. I'm also gonna get myself some variables. So I'm gonna get first myself a fall off amount. I'm gonna set it to be a float and since editable. And then I'm also gonna get ourselves another float and we're gonna call it prune amount and since editable. Now these two, I do not need to hook up anywhere. So we can take our blueprint, drag it in. You don't see anything by default. In fact, let's go ahead and actually give it a default mesh. And we're just gonna put a cube in here. So when you drag in something, there's a shape. And here we're gonna add a PCG graph. Let's add a PCG. And then we're just gonna go select our PCG graph and plug it in to our graph here. And we can now start putting something in here. For example, we just use a sphere because it'll be a good temporary one. And then we're gonna swap it out with a mesh. So let's go ahead and open our PCG. The first thing we're gonna need to grab is our mesh sampler. So this is a new node that does not exist unless we turn on the new the geometry scripting part of the PCG in the plugins. So by default, there's a mesh to points. And if I come in here and I just search mesh to points, this is the normal one everyone uses. And you can overwrite some stuff, but one thing you can't overwrite here is the static mesh. But on this one, this has a static mesh the same way and it has, an, it has something you can use here. It has a static mesh and that's what we're gonna be using. So we're gonna go ahead and search for property to forget actor property. And the property name will be mesh, which is our variable name. And we're gonna plug that into static mesh. So now we have a sphere. So there's our sphere and here it is at origin, but there's all our points from the sphere. We can move this around and, but it stays there. So now we wanna move the points onto the sphere. So we're gonna go ahead and get a copy points. The source are gonna be the points that we have and the target is going to get the object's location. So we're gonna get actor data and we're gonna plug this in and we can go ahead and stop sampling the sampler and sample the copy points. And you can see it's a mess. Uh, that is, it seems like a lot of spheres on top of each other. And to fix that is very simple. Under here, instead of the default, we wanna select get a single point. And now you see the sphere now has all the points right on top of it. So at this point, we can go ahead and filter it out. So let's go ahead and search for noise, for density noise. And this I can do filter by noise or density filter. So the way density filter works is we have a lower bound and we can decrease it and then retain it much more, or we can increase this and decrease less. So effectively it is pruning 0.8 of one in terms of values. And if it's not between 0.8 and one, it will go away. So we want to control this with our blueprint. And we made a variable, we made a prune amount. So we're going to get another property, get actor property. And we're going to say the variable's name is prune amount. And we're going to open it up and 
plug it into lower bound. So now inside of our blueprint here, you can go in here and prune them out and just set it to 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1 and get rid of everything. So now you can already remove the, the amount of points you want for this. But we want to get a little a top down effect. Because if we're going to be generating grass, we want it only on top. So we're going to go ahead and search normal to density. If I go ahead and sample this, you can now see anything that is angled up is white and anything that's going angled down becomes black. What we're going to do is filter again, density filter. And here we can go ahead and sample either we keep everything, keep a little bit. You can really specify how much you want to sample, uh, retain. So if it's zero, it'll retake everything, but any kind of value above zero will go all the way over to the halfway point. And of course, then you can start specifying how much you want to retain. So what we're going to do is plug in our fall off amount. I'm going to grab our actor property and just duplicate it over. And here inside of the lower bound for the density filter, we're going to, instead of prune amount, we're going to use fall off amount. So now our fall off amount is zero. We're going to set it to 0 0.5. You can see it's now cleared off a little bit. Now to make it easy, I'm going to ahead and open this blueprint. And in our setups, I'm going to limit the numbers. So the fall off amount, I'm going to set the range between 0 0.01 and 1. Actually, I'll go ahead and between 0 and 1. That way you can basically turn it off if you want the full sphere and not a directional. And same thing with the prune amount between 0 and 1. And I'll prune half by default and fall off half by default. So now we have these points. So now we can go ahead and transform points to randomly move them around. I will randomly rotate along Y. And because we're gonna be spawning grass, I'm gonna maybe wanna do a little bit of rotation. So I will do like between uh, minus three, minus three uh, to three. So I'll rotate uh, along its axis a little bit randomly. And then we just need a static mesh spawner. So we're gonna plug it in. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and put in some mesh entry. So in here, I can open this up. And for now, let's just grab a cube. And you can immediately see it has now spawned a lot of cubes right on top. And if I turn off, uh, increase the fall off amount, it'll decrease the amount of cubes or increase the amount of cubes based on this fall off, as well as the prune. I can reduce the amount of cubes there. They're very large, which is why they're appearing this way. But now we have full control between our blueprint and our object. So let's go ahead and swap these out now with some Megascans assets. So I've gone ahead and downloaded a rock and some grass from Megascans. And so I'm gonna plug in our rock mesh in here. And you can see it has become extremely dense. And the reason is I actually downloaded the Nanite one specifically. So it has a lot of triangles. So some things you can do is in here under the mesh sampler, you can change the sampling method. So it's one point per triangle. You can one point per vertex, or you can use Poisson sampling. So I'm fine with keeping it like this because now if you have a super dense mesh, which is one to show, this is where the pruning amount comes in. So you can prune like 0.9 or even like 0.99 and really reduce this number. And then let's go ahead and put in our grass. So I'm gonna to swap this out with a few grass, plug this in, and I'm gonna add some variations and add another one. So we have three variations in here. And you can see immediately, it is a very small rock with very large grass. So what we can do, of course, is scale this up. But you'll notice it's also scaling the grass. We don't really want this. We don't wanna have our grass scaled. So under transform points, we can select absolute scale. So that way, the grass does not scale up. So now, even if we scale this up, you could see the grass stays. So at this point, we can now lower the amount of pruning because we want to keep a little more grass. And maybe we can change the fall off to be a little more. So at point 0.9, you can see it's now happening just on top. And as I rotate, it will automatically adjust. And just like that, we have... Fully procedural setup where you can now swap this for any shape I want. I can go back to a sphere. I go to an editor sphere. There's our grass on top of the sphere. And same thing, I can decrease the fall off to get more grass back. And there you go. So one thing to note actually is as I decrease this, and you can really see it on the sphere, is the grass is facing the direction of the normal. 
And that's because the points are oriented along the normal. So that is something to watch out for as this is sampling the mesh and then the points are normally directional. Of course, you can edit the points to adjust for this, but the end result is now we have the ability to swap to any mesh we want. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was helpful to you guys. If you have any other suggestions on things you'd like to learn with PCG materials or anything else, don't hesitate to reach out. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.